want to give an illustration of what I call the evolution of evidence, and I'm going to use the example of the development of guidelines of subclinical hypothyroidism. This process started in a great way. They started with a scientific panel that looked at the evidence. This evidence group searched 10 databases. They summarized all of the studies, and 12 experts graded the evidence for its quality. Based on their reading of the literature, they recommended against routine screening for subclinical hypothyroidism. They also recommended against the routine treatment of TSH levels within the range of 4.5 to 10, which is the range where we think about subclinical hypothyroidism. This statement from the scientific panel, along with their expert review, then went to a consensus meeting among members of several groups, the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, the American Thyroid Association, and the Endocrine Society. This group took that evidence, looked at the recommendations, and came up with their own recommendation statement that represented the views of these three groups. These recommendations were then sent to the leadership of the organizations to get signed off. The result was new recommendations from the three societies that were markedly different from the previous group. What they basically said was that most patients with TSH levels between 4.5 and, and 10 should be treated. They also said you should perform routine screening for subclinical hypothyroidism. So these are in direct contradiction to the earlier recommendation statement. They explained why. Now you have to read several pages into their guideline, but what they say is this, quote, although good evidence is unavailable to support our recommendation, there is a sizable amount of fair evidence, an abundance of opinion by experts, and that the scientific panel recommendations are contrary to the practice of many experts. So, in a sense, their conclusion was that even though the evidence says one thing, this is not what we do and it doesn't fit in line with what experts think about this, so we're going to base our recommendations more on what experts say than what on the evidence says. Here's another illustration. In September 2009, the United States Preventive Services Task Force issued these guidelines about screening for hyperbilirubinemia in the newborn. They basically said that Quote, the evidence is insufficient to recommend screening infants for hyperbilirubinemia to prevent chronic bilirubin encephalopathy. However, in that same month, the American Pediatrics Association restated their guidelines, which were quite different. Their guidelines said, quote, we recommend universal pre-discharge bilirubin screening, which helps to assess the risk of subsequent severe hyperbilirubinemia. These recommendations represent a consensus of expert opinion based on the available evidence, and they are supported by several independent reviewers.